Kia good morning everyone, which one here, welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at a very interesting lens from S3 Hori. It is the 85mm f2.8 macro tilt lens. The interesting thing about this lens is that the price is only US $329, which is pretty cheap even just for a full frame macro lens. And this one is a tilt lens as well. So that makes it even more attractive. It does sound a little bit too good to be true, and I will tell you now that there are definitely some limitations with this lens. Just a quick disclaimer before we start, the lens I used for this review was sent to me by S3 Hori, but as usual, I will share with you my honest opinion, so you will hear me talk about the pros and cons of this lens, and unfortunately, there are quite a few cons with this lens. The most interesting thing about this S3 Holy lens is that it is not just a macro lens, but it's also a tilt lens as well. So let's start by talk about what is a tilt lens and why it's a very cool feature and I will show you some example as well. If you already know what is a tilt lens, you can just skip to the next chapter of this review. I got the time index below. So with a normal lens, the focal plane is parallel to the camera's image sensor. So what that means is if you point your camera straight forward, there will be a virtual vertical plane somewhere in front of your camera where everything will be in focus. So anything that is in front or behind the focal plane will be out of focus. The area that is in focus depends on the focal length, the focus distance, and also the aperture that you set on your lens. With a large aperture like f2.8, you will have very shallow depth of field. And a small aperture like f16, you will have more depth of field. You could adjust the focus and move that focal plane forward or backward. But basically, your subject has to be near the focal plane and within the depth of field if you want it to be in focus. Now, I have two Lego minifigures on my desk. One is slightly behind another. So if my camera is directly in front of the minifigures and I shoot at f2.8, I can only have one of the minifigures in focus because they are not on the same focal plane and also the depth of field doesn't cover both of them. I could stop down the lens to increase the depth of field. So if I stop down the lens to f11 and I adjust the focus a little bit, I could get both minifigures in focus. But at f11, I lost four stops of light compared to f2.8. So my exposure time has to be 16 times slower. Now with the tilt lens, what I can do is I just tilt the lens and that would tilt the focal plane so that the focal plane would roughly align with the two mini figures. And this way I could keep the lens at f2.8, the maximum aperture, and I can still have both of the mini figures in focus. So this is one example how you could use a tilt lens to manipulate your focal plane to help you to have your objects in focus. This is especially useful when you are shooting macro photos as very often you will find yourself just not having enough depth of field to make your entire subject in focus. So by using a tilt lens and tilting the focal plane accordingly, you don't have to stop down the lens that much or rely on focus stacking. So this is pretty much what the tilt lens was originally designed for. But these days, quite often we'll use a tilt lens in opposite way to achieve some artistic effect that you couldn't do with a normal lens. What I mean is, you could use the tilt lens to tilt the focal plane in a way to make part of your photo out of focus to create some dreamy looking photo. For example, if I take a photo of a building that is directly in front of me, normally the whole building should be in focus because the building is on the same focal plane if I point the camera straight towards it. But by tilting the lens, I could make only part of the building in focus. Most tilt lenses, including this S3 Hori 85mm lens, would also allow you to rotate the lens so you can tilt the lens in different direction. And as a result, you can control the out-of-focus effect. 
So by using a tilt lens this way, you could create some unusual blur effect for your photos. You could create some miniature effect like this example because the unusual shadow depth of field effect tricks our brain and make us think this is a scale miniature set. Portrait photographers will also sometimes use a tilt lens to create some dreamy portrait photos as well. Just like most other lenses from China, this Atri Holly 85mm f2.8 macro lens is a fully mechanical, fully manual lens with no electronic features at all and no electronic context. So when you are taking photos, the camera would not know anything about the lens and therefore the EXIF data wouldn't record any lens information. The lens has a very solid metal construction and while the size is not really that big for 85mm f2.8 macro lens, it is pretty heavy. The lens weighs a little bit over 700g. The aesthetic design of the lens doesn't look really that attractive to my eyes. I know some of you would probably comment and say who cares, but I do care. There is a detected aperture ring at the front of the lens. The aperture ring is quite tight but reasonably smooth. I like how they make the aperture ring a little bit more extruded and bigger in diameter compared to the focus ring. So you can tell whether you are grabbing the aperture ring or the focus ring without looking at the lens. The focus ring is also quite tight as well. Focus flow is around 135 degrees. I would prefer if the focus flow is a little bit longer as I find adjusting the focus with this lens could be a little bit tricky sometimes and I feel it's a little bit too sensitive. The lens is an internal focus lens which means the length of the lens doesn't change when you are adjusting focus. That is a very good thing for a macro lens as the front of the lens won't extend and accidentally hit your subject when you are adjusting focus when taking macro photos. If you look at the front of the lens, something is a little bit weird. The lens doesn't come with any lens hood but if you look at the front, it seems like the lens was originally designed with a lens hood but for some reason now it doesn't come with any lens hood and I don't really know why. Now if we have a look at the back of the lens, first we have a need to knob here on the side. This is for you to lock or unlock the tilt adjustment. So once you unlock it, you can then use the knob on the other side to adjust the tilt angle and you can go to a maximum of 8 degree tilt. I feel the knobs could be a little bit bigger to make it a bit easier to use, especially if you have bigger hands or you're wearing gloves. There are some markings on the side which tell you how many degrees you are tilting the lens. However, since the tilt markings are right behind the tilt adjustment knob, so it makes it quite hard to see what is the actual tilt angle. This is probably the reason why most other companies like Nikon or Canon would place the tilt markings slightly away from the knob so you can see the tilt angle a lot easier. There is no soft click for the tilt adjustment. The only way that you can make sure you set the tilt angle back to zero is by holding the top and bottom of the lens with your finger to force the tilt back to zero. You can also rotate the lens. There is a little red line here to tell you where is the top of the lens. However, there's no other markings to tell you how much you have rotated the lens and there's also no soft clicks either which means you just can't really tell how much you have rotated the lens. So it's pretty much impossible if you want to rotate the lens precisely by say 45 or 90 degrees. Okay, it's time to look at the image sharpness and we will start with the center sharpness. If we zoom in the center of the photo, at f2.8, the center is acceptable but not exactly sharp. When I stop down the lens to f4, f5.6, the center sharpness still pretty much the same. The best center sharpness is at f11 which is a little bit strange. I even redo this sharpness test again to make sure what I got is correct and my second round of test results were also pretty much the same. I still need to stop down the lens to f11 to get the best center sharpness. And we'll look at the corner sharpness now. At f2.8, the corner sharpness is not too bad if we focus the photo at the corner 
But if we focus at the center of the photo, then the corner is quite soft. Stopping down the lens to f4, the corner is still soft if we focus at the center, but if we focus at the corner, then the corner is already very sharp. And for the corner to be really sharp when I focus at the center of the photo, I have to stop down the lens all the way to f11 again. So it suggests the lens has a bit of field curvature and you have to be careful where do you focus if corner sharpness is important to you. This S3 Hori 85mm lens is a macro lens that can provide one times maximum magnification. The minimum focus distance is 25cm or approximately 10 inches. The working distance, which is the distance between the front of the lens and the subject when you are taking one times macro photos is approximately 12 centimeter. That is not too bad. It gives you enough distance to use external light source to light up the scene easily. Sharpness when shooting one times macro photo is also pretty decent. Even at f2.8, the center sharpness is already pretty good. And as you stop down a bit to f5.6, the center sharpness becomes excellent. And it remains similar until we stop down to f11. After that, diffraction will make the photo softer. Looking at my real world photos, the bokeh from this 85mm macro lens is pretty alright and looks quite pleasant. There is a bit of cat's eye effect near the corner, but it's not too serious. Sometimes the bokeh balls may have a little bit of texture and a little bit of highlight near the edge. But even so, overall, I don't find the bokeh too nervous. When stopped down the lens to f8 or even f11, the bokeh boss remains reasonably round fence to its 12 aperture braid design. If you use the tilt feature, the shape of the bokeh balls will change quite dramatically depends on how much you tilt the lens and also the direction of the tilt. Here are a few photos that I shot from the same place with the same aperture setting and the same focus distance. The only difference is that I tilt the lens and also change the direction of the tilt. And you can see the bokeh looks very different in every single photo. And now let's have a look at the lens vignetting performance. At the maximum aperture, there is quite a bit of vignetting. It gets a bit better at f4, but vignetting is still noticeable even when we stop down to f8. And if you want to have no vignetting at all, you need to stop down all the way to the minimum aperture f16. Now that is when the lens is not tilted. If you tilt the lens, then it becomes a lot worse. Here are some test photos that I shot at the minimum aperture f16 and the lens set to infinity focus. With the lens not tilted, there's no vignetting at all. Now if we tilt the lens by 2 degrees, there is already a tiny bit of dark corner. It becomes really noticeable when we tilt the lens by 4 degrees and it getting worse as we tilt the lens further. So at the maximum tilt 8 degree, about one third of the photo is dark. And that was when focus was set to infinity. If we change the focus to the minimum focus distance, it does get a lot better. There's no dark corner at all when we tilt the lens by 2, 4 or even 6 degrees. Only when we tilt it to the maximum 8 degrees, then there is a bit of dark corner. So unfortunately, I would say the tilt feature is only really suitable for macro photos when used on a full frame camera. If you are using an APS-C camera, then it is okay. Chromatic aberration control is pretty average with this S3 Hori lens. Quite often, I can see some color fringing in my photos, and sometimes it happens even when the photo doesn't have really high contrast and I can still see a bit of purple fringing. Color fringing could also be very noticeable when I'm adjusting the focus. Very often, I will see purple or green color finching appears and disappear when I'm moving the focus ring. With this S3 Hori 85mm lens, distortion is pretty well controlled. Even with my brick wall test photo, it shows very minimal amount of distortion. There is a tiny amount of pin cushion distortion, but since that amount is so small, I won't even bother to correct it during post-processing. As S3 Hori is quite a new company, so I was expecting this lens would have some pretty terrible lens flare performance. 
but turns out it was not as bad as I thought it would be. While the contrast may drop a bit under some certain lighting condition, overall lens flare performance is very acceptable for a budget lens. There isn't too much ghosting at all, and most of the time contrast remains decent as well. This lens has a 12 aperture braid design, so when you stop down the lens, it will render 12 points sun stars. The sun stars become apparent at around f8, and when you stop down the lens to f11, then the sun stars become very sharp and looks quite beautiful. Now let's have a look at the focus breathing performance. Here is a test video footage that I changed the focus from around 1 meter to infinity. You can see a bit of focus breathing, but I think overall it is about average for a macro lens which usually has a lot of focus breathing. On paper, this S3 Hori 85mm f2.8 macro tilt lens is fantastic. Just a little bit over US $300 for a full frame 85mm f2.8 macro lens with tilt feature sounds pretty amazing. Now, after using this lens, I would say build quality wise, it's a bit unpolished in some areas, but for a budget lens, it is alright. In terms of image quality, the sharpness could be a bit better, but then there really isn't any serious flaw. So, for a lens at this price, I think it is acceptable. However, the biggest selling point of this lens is the tilt feature, and this is what I'm disappointed. I'm not disappointed because the tilt markings are quite hard to see, or there's no marking or soft click for the rotation, which make it quite hard to accurately set the tilt or rotation. These are flaws, but I think acceptable flaws for a budget lens. What I'm really disappointed is that as soon as you dial in a small amount of tilt, and there would already be dark area visible in the photo, so it really limits what you can do with this tilt lens on a full frame camera at least, which is what this lens is marketed as. Now to be fair, S3 Hori did mention this limitation in their promotional material. They call this lens a full frame macro lens and an APS-C tilt lens, which is technically correct but I really think they should just market it as an APS-C tilt lens. And it is not a bad budget APS-C lens at all. However, with the way how this lens is marketed right now, I think a lot of people would just read that this is a full frame lens and it is a tilt lens and assume it is a tilt lens for full frame cameras. Unfortunately, one plus one does not equal to two in this case. And if someone bought this lens to use on their full frame camera, they would really be disappointed.